everyone, welcome to Watch It Paint It. This week we're painting the Cliff Breaker Cyclops from Massive Darkness by Cool Mini or Not. Look at the size of him compared to a hero. So on this video I'm going to start off by showing you some liquid green stuff. I've just purchased this, I've never used it before, so I'm going to be learning a little bit with you guys as well if you've not used it. If you have, let me know if I could improve in the comments below. Now what this is for is to fill sort of those mould lines, those large gaps in the Cliff Breaker Cyclops. Unfortunately it has huge gaps, or at least my model did, in his elbows on both sides where the two parts of the model are joined together. So I'm just using a, a fairly cheap paintbrush and just taking the green stuff and trying to work that into those two large gaps just pushing that in as best I can rubbing it in making sure it goes nice and deep and then filling on top of that as best that I can so once that's done I'm going to take I'm going to wet my brush fairly wet and then and water down what I've been applying and sort of blend that uh, and sort of smooth it into the rest of the model just very carefully and that will make a nice transition between the, the rest of the model and this gap filling it in I'll probably make a standalone video of this if I use it more in the future so back to the Cyclops, back to painting now, and we've primed this using Army Painter's Colour Primer Barbarian Flesh, and that's a near match to the Survivor skin that they also do. With this model being mostly flesh, as you can see, it's going to save a huge amount of time. So we're going to start off with Storm Vermin Fur. This is a dark grey, similar to the neck Necromancer's Cloak by the Army Painter. This is Citadel's version. We're using the biggest brush we've got, a big monster brush there, and just getting a nice, even, watery coverage across this whole rock. So Benson's back this week. If you've not noticed there, his hands are not mine and his table are not mine. So he's back this week um, just fulfilling his promise of getting enough likes, so doing you an extra video. So big up Benson. Thumbs up below if you enjoy this video. So he's painted the rock and he's moving on to painting the the Cyclops' large cleaver in the same colour. He's going he's gonna to be brandishing a large rock cleaver, we think. And then he's going to also be painting these rocks on his chest in the same. Still using the same brush, but quickly realising we need to switch down to the base brush now to start doing these smaller details. So sticking with the Storm Vermin first still, but we just switch down to the base, similar to the Regiment brush by the Army Painter, and we're just carrying on painting in those rocks on his on his waist and the smaller details on the bits we couldn't quite get in without touching the the uh, cyclops' skin so the rocks on his chest so there's quite a few of those to do there's not many colors to to use in this model so it's it's quite quick for the the, the size of it this is obviously like 10 I don't know 10 20 times the normal size steel legion drab is next by citadel this is a sort of light brown very similar to the leather uh brown leather in both the Army Painter and Vallejo sets, so if you've got those, use those instead by all means. Otherwise, this is just a paint on the straps that you can see there, front and back. So the next in the colour lineup is Hash Hut Copper. So as it turns out, Benson doesn't actually own a gold, like who can believe that? So I've set up a, a new Patreon reward level, $2 a month, just bigs up Benson and also might help him buy some paints instead of having to steal mine. But for this video, he's going to be painting the gold copper. And at the end, I'm going to highlight it in gold so we get the right colour. I think the coppers work quite well as the sort of the shade tone, the, the, the darker bit. And then I'll highlight it with the real gold. And I think it works quite well at the end. Let us know in the comments what you, what you think. Should we have just uh, made sure Benson had a gold? It will, we'll see by the end. So he's just painting that base brush again. Just all of these metallic parts that are just dangling from the Cyclops is sort of medallions who knows it's great this crazy cyclops so benson's using you shabti bone this is a, a beigey beigey color by citadel and that's to paint on his horns there so two horns just using the base brush still and he's going to be using the same color to paint in the cyclops's teeth and what's connected to the teeth bones the chin bones so he's going to also be doing the chin bones there same color and the skull that you can find on the cyclops's cleaver just there just a little dab of your shabti bone on there. I mean, use the bone colour for all the bones. It's quite easy. And toenails, same colour. Give him some dirty looking <laughs> toenails. Uh, five on each toe, yeah, fairly standard. He may only have one eye, but he has the same number of toes as the rest of us, don't judge. Beastie Brown is next colour, and this is a darker brown. This is sort of more like the dirt splatter from the Army Painter. Uh, that's by Vallejo, and that's to paint on the, the handle for his sword and he's going to use talon sand by citadel this is a lighter a lighter brown um sort of like leathery brown is very similar um i think that is one of the colors the army painter set at least that what i've got is missing this sort of light brown yellowy brown so i guess maybe it's similar to 
bony spikes or skeleton skeleton bones so either of those might do you have a have a look and see what you think strachan greens next that's the uh, that's citadel's green similar to the elf green from army painter or any of the greens uh, camouflage green by vallejo it's probably quite similar or the crocodile one what's the crocodile one called Kai Cayman, Cayman Green, there you go, got there in the end. So those would probably be decent greens for this as well if you don't have the Citadel's one. Um, so he's just being very careful around all those bits he's painted and, and the skin obviously because that's already the colour we want it to be. So just take your time with this bit. Uh, it's probably one of the, the slowest bits just because of the amount we've already painted. Uh, he's also got a little leg strap there in the same colour so don't forget to paint that the same. We're going to use a second green for some of the rest of the model just to give some contrast to it and that's for the straps, these green straps you can see in the artwork and we're going to use Scarsnick green here which is uh, Citadel's lighter green so mouldy clothes maybe from the army painter or any of the lighter greens than camouflage or cayman green by Vallejo should also give a nice contrast in the two greens for you. So that's the strap all painted. Then the Cyclops has got all these straps running all over his chest holding all these uh, gold medallions and rocks to him and whatever else he's managed to collect and dress himself up with so make sure you paint those all in the same color that'll look very tidy and then he's got more straps so oh, he's just got stuff hanging oh rocks as well this guy's like a magpie this is not a cyclops this is a magpie he's just collected anything shiny and he's just got it strapped to himself I like those rocks though i like to imagine he uses those as a ranged weapon i've not actually seen the card for this this character does he have a ranged attack yeah, he must do. He throws the rock, right? Knives, knives, melee, rocks, ranged. So he's also got a couple of straps just on the back of his of his leg guard there. Agrax Earthshade is Benson's first choice for the shader, and he's going to be shading all the dark um, colours using this. So that's the rocks, the straps, the... He's used copper at the moment, but the gold and all the browns. Next is Seraphim Sepia, and he's going to use this for the Talon Sand that he painted on before. So that's his sort of uh, back garment and that's running slightly forwards onto these straps that are holding it up at the front. He's also going to be using this um, the shader on all the Ushabti bones, that's that skull there, his teeth, all these little bits of horns that are sticking through his head and his chin and the, the massive horns on, on top of his head. He's also going to do each of his toenails with the same shade, just give it a nice deep look and feel. He's going to use a shade we've not seen before, I don't know how you pronounce that, Colia Green Shade. So I really like, like doing this, I've started doing it myself and that's using a shade that matches the colour that you're trying to shade. So he's used a green as the base and a green shade as well. And I just think that gives it a, a, a cleaner, easier transition between dark and, and the light green you highlight with. So next he's on to highlighting and he's going to start with 75% Skaven Blight Dinge and 25% White Scar. He's going to be dry brushing this onto the rock that he painted um, right at the beginning. Uh, Benson's got a new kitten, that's Agnes. He's just checking out Benson's work and like me, wasn't impressed with this uh, mix of the two paints. So Benson's going again at 50% Skaven Blight Dinge and 50% White Scar based on Agnes's corrections and I, I don't know about you but I think that looks fantastic. Uh, compared, especially compared to what it was looking like. It's going to take a very, very long time uh, with the smaller percentage of white scar. So he's just ever so carefully dry brushing this onto all of those uh, those grey areas, all those rocks that he painted right at the beginning. And I think that's, and the cleaver, don't miss the cleaver. I think that's that's popping really, really well. He's then going to use just 100% white scar and just add a few extra highlights to the most raised bit. Still just dry brushing that on. Strachan green back to the original base color of the green and he's just painting in some of the areas of the green where the where the shade has settled and he's not wanted it to so then I think he's just concentrating so hard on doing this he falls off his chair or something and we get to see his ceiling for a little while it's quite a pleasant view it's a nice tidy ceiling so back to <laughs> back to uh, highlighting the green and he's just carrying on painting in this in all the raised areas of the cloth uh, leaving the shade in all those recessed areas just and and I think I think, uh, as I mentioned before, if you're using the same colour shade, I think it, the transition's instantly a lot better. And you're just highlighting it up just very lightly, and then you'll go to a, a stronger highlight by the end. So 75% Beastie Brown and 25% Ushabti Bone, just a lighter brown he's mixed up here. And this is to highlight the, the handle of the straps around his uh, cleaver. So he's just applying a nice thick line of that. And then he's going to switch down to his detail brush by Citadel. And he's going to be using a 50-50% mix of those two colours now just to add that 
last highlight, a thinner, thinner highlight using his thinner brush and just adding that to the very raised edge of each part of that sort of strap. He's going to be using talon sand and that's to highlight up all the other straps that he painted on the model so that that's across his chest uh, holding all of these objects in so make sure you go around the side as well and he's just painting a, a thin line on the top and bottom of those straps just to give the effect lights hitting off the, off the raised edges of both of them. He's going to do exactly the same with the snarstick green with 50% white scar as well and just paint the top and bottom edges of all of those green straps that he painted in uh, that they're holding on the rocks and the cleaver as well and just being very careful with his detail brush there's quite a few straps in and amongst all the the gold medallions on his on his thighs as well as holding up those little rings and all the medallions and rocks on his chest as well so he's just adding a dab to to the sides of those straps you've shabbed to bone 100 percent uh this is to highlight up all the bone colors so that's the skull on his cleaver and the bones on his, his head, well his horns on his head and he'll also be doing a dab on all of the bones which we may not see because the footage is obviously sped up very quick and it does not take long to dab a little dot on. A bad and black and that's to paint in his, his eyes, massive pupil. And then Strachan Green 50% and Ushabti Bone 50% and that's to add that final highlight to all of his green uh, cloth so that's his leg guard and his uh, loin cloth around his waist so he's just going around now and just adding a thin amount to the to the edge of all of the folds uh, around the bottom edge of the of the cloth and then all of the raised parts of his of his leg guard there so he's going to be on to highlighting the skin next he's going to start with 75% survivor skin and 25% white scar now you might have noticed at the start he didn't use a wash on any of the skin, so he's, this is going to, I think, by the end, have a very clean transition. Often when you use washes, especially dark washes on skin, you're going get, to get it to look quite dirty, and you spend a lot of time re-highlighting it up. So what we noticed is the Cyclops had quite pale skin in the artwork, so we just started with the darkest skin we had, and we are just going to lighten that up uh, bit, bit by bit, just uh, making it a more natural look, look to the model instead of using the wash. I personally might have just used a little bit of the lightest wash I have or the flesh wash and just do around the edges of all of his clothes. So 50% survivor skin and 50% white scars, the final highlight. And he's just applying a smaller amount of this to each of the uh, individual muscles and uh, like ligaments in his, in his foot. Is that like, well, you can see for yourself, uh, just a much smaller highlight of this on all the, all the centers of each ab there. Uh, each muscle will have a little dab of this in the middle, just lightening them up as a whole. I think this is one of the more, more timing, time-consuming parts of painting the model. I mean, it's obviously 90% skin, maybe not 90, 80% skin. That's a lot of skin. After he's finished with the skin, he's going to be highlighting up the toenails, and that's using the same colour, and all of the bones that are sticking out of his head and his fingernails as well, which we've not seen him do, but... They've been following the same pattern as the toenails. He's going to use 100% white scar just as a final finish on all of those uh, toenails and teeth and his fingernails and those bones sticking out of his head, as well as the horns at the top. So just catching the very, very edges with the brightest white he has. And that's just giving a, a, a nice finish to it. He's going to finish the Abaddon black on his eye now. Uh, he'll have painted in uh, white scar for the actual eyeball itself. And then he's just adding a little black pupil to the middle of that. Uh, using the same black for the base, just painting very carefully around his feet and then you'll go nuts on the rest of the base. This will really make the model pop by the end and stand out from his base. And then he's back to my house now and that's the land of the, the gold. Uh, I've got many golds, as uh, you've probably seen that I've just got three. But for this one I'm going to use bright gold by the Army Painter. And I'm using my regiment brush and I'm just applying a small dab to the sort of top bits of all of those areas that he painted copper before. And I think the copper and gold have, uh, works really well together. The copper just looks like shaded gold really so adding the bright bit to the top and it's and it brings out the the highlight of it really and that's it that's the model completely finished all to, all in all took about one hour 56 minutes i think that's really good going to say the size of this i'd forgotten how big it was i've not seen it for a while it's been at benson's house and i can't wait to this get on this gets on the board it's gonna have a huge board presence i think that skin's come out really really well as the slight distance i'm now holding it at is still much closer than you'd ever see it at the table and i think it looks fantastic so I hope you'll be joining me in Big Up Benson with a thumbs up below or maybe even a comment. Or if you want to go one step further, come and check out the Patreon and the Big Up Benson reward. Thank you all very much for watching.